Hey, Marie back with another video. It's 1.42 p.m. It is Thursday afternoon. It is um, April 23rd. And so this is my third time, third time making this video. <laughs> First time um, I ended up um, touching the stop button and then I resumed making a separate video. And so I didn't like the way the last video I made, the remake I made, so I'm making it again. So this is third time's a charm. Hopefully this one works out well. Um, and so anyway, um, I got a comment from, um, I guess one of my subscribers, or maybe just the person who watched my video. I'm not sure if they're a subscriber or not, but, um, they, they wrote me and wanted to get, I guess my advice. And I really do appreciate you asking me. Um, I would say that I'm not a professional, but I doubt, um, a professional could give you any better advice. Okay. Because this is a very tricky situation. Not everybody knows how to handle these sort of con uh, family conflicts. Um, sometimes, you know, they are able to give you, you know, what I consider to be cookie cutter advice. It's not necessarily going to help you. So this is the only thing I can do. I can do the best I can. Okay. But each situation is different and, um, you just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. So anyway, I'm going to read your, um, comment. I'm going to leave this person's name, um, anonymous because, you know, I just want to protect her privacy. Um, but anyway, I will read her, um, her question and I will answer it to the best of my ability. She says, um, I have a question for you about my situation with my family, my slash relatives that disowned me and abused me. My ex relative, who is my aunt has was granted custody of my son back in 2014. My son is six years old now and my evil ass aunt has been alienating my son from me even before she was granted custody of my son. I believe my whole family conspired to take my son away from me as soon as I told them I was pregnant. My aunt that has custody of my son doesn't call me, doesn't make any efforts at all to let my son bond with me, and to top that, top off all that, she tells lies to my son and other people that I didn't even love my son. That, that I'm a bad person. My question is, should I stop making effort in con contacting her and leave her completely alone, even though she has custody of my son, but at the same time, she disowns and slanders me, his mother. Something inside me keeps telling me to leave them those people alone. They are not my people, but I love my son and don't want him to grow up resenting and hating me over a situation I could not turn out better. Um, but I know I'm going to have to cut myself off from them completely sooner rather than later. Um, the first issue I'm going to, like, I'm going to dissect this a little bit more. So it says that your relatives, I'm assuming you're either, you either were married and you got a divorce or you had this child out of wedlock there is some reason why your family do, does not believe that you are um, able to support your kid. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're working or not. Um, if you were working at the time where you were pregnant um, or when we, whether it was a period of time where you were actually raising him, you know, I don't know if you, you know, were working or able to financially support your kid. Um, but maybe, you know, sometimes people kind of judge people harshly. Like, for example, in your situation, it seems as though your family has always had a negative attitude towards you. I'm, I'm not sure if you're one of the scapegoated people or what. I don't know exactly what happened in your family. But oftentimes when you are a scapegoated person, um, you are dealing with people who are never going to be happy with what you do. So, I mean, you may not even have ever rebelled against them. They feel as though you're different from them. So therefore everything that you do, they are going to find um, something wrong with it. So, you know, um, it's not necessarily you being rebellious. It just might be that you might be different. And so therefore, um, in their mind, even though it's not breaking the law to be different or anything, they still look at it as an act of rebellion. And uh, oftentimes we are caught up in the vicious cycle of, uh, dealing with abusive families. So like, for example, in my case, I know that I did have a child out of wedlock and, um, mainly the reasons why, when you look back at it, is that I was constantly being put in environments where abuse, in uh, abusive type situations where I'm being surrounded by people that are going to target me. They're going to abuse me. So when you are dealing with these sort of toxic planned environments, um, you know, you, you tend to compromise yourself and you tend to lower your standards. And perhaps maybe I'm not sure if you were married or you had a child out of wedlock, but you had a child. And so because of you making a mistake, that just gives them more reason to 
you know, <laughs> it adds fuel to the fire. And so therefore they look at you as an unfit parent. Now, I'm not sure if you are an unfit parent or not. I'm assuming you have the ability to raise your kid. I'm assuming that you wanted to have custody of your kid. Um, but maybe it could be reasons why some people just think anybody who has, doesn't matter the reasons, anybody who has an illegitimate kid in their mind is unfit to be a mother period plain and simple black they see things very bl in, in terms of black and white you know doesn't matter if you know you realize that you know you you made a mistake and you're willing to take care of that kid it doesn't matter okay because if you're dealing with abusive people they are always going to come up with something that they're going to find wrong with what you're doing okay so um, you, if they're alienating your, your son from you, chances are he has already adapted their way of thinking, okay? And slowly but surely, he's going to be able, he's going to find fault with you, even because he's too young to be able to analyze the situation. All he knows is that there's a predominant, predominant clan around him, and they are, the more brainwashing that he's going to get from them, it's going to be very difficult for him to see you as the human being that you are. Um, so the only thing that you can really do if you have any form of custody, like I know you said your aunt has custody of your son. If you have the um, legal, any legal visitation rights, I suggest that you take advantage of those opportunities to see your kid, um, get a chance to know your kid, but don't expect miracles because um, like I said, it is their response. It is their, your abusive family's goal, okay, to always find fault in which you do. So every day that you, or every, any time that you visit your child, you know, they're going to want to know what you did and then they're going to find fault. If you took your kid to Burger King, they're going to bitch and tell that kid that you should have took him to McDonald's. If you're going to do this, they're going to do this. It, 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 do not try to, ex, don't expect that your kid is going to lean towards you. Now, there may be a day where he does, where, you know, maybe when he's 18 years old and um, he might seek you out for, you know, this is, he wants a relationship with his natural mother and he may be able to use logic and reason and understand certain families do have this sort of sickness and these sort of competitions and these power plays that go on in the family. And maybe he will be able to provide I mean, he, you guys might be able to bond and have a, re a regular relationship, and I hope that's what happens, okay? Um, I know that he's your son, and I think it's really insensitive for some people to say things like, well, just go on with your life, you know, uh, or, you know, you might be young now, so go get married and have more children. And the thing is, you still love that one six-year-old son that you have, okay? It's not like you can replace them. You want a relationship with them, and I know that you do, okay? But realistically your mom has le your aunt sorry your aunt has legal custody of your son and as much as you love your son okay you just have to step back and hope for the best if you do have visitation rights like i said take advantage of the visitation rights but do not expect miracles okay one day and if you don't have visitation rights then one day when he's old enough his of, of legal age he may come out and seek you out as uh, to want a relationship with you that don't just because he's going to be under a lot of influence negative influence doesn't mean that he's going to make up his mind and there i will say most of the time okay that it's very hard not to be influenced when there's a predominant clan around you and they create a reality that makes it seem as though everything that you do is wrong Okay, but like I said, there are sometimes maybe maybe he might have your DNA. Chances are you're an empathetic person. You're somebody who can um, doesn't take sides, and you can kind of separate truth from lies. Maybe he has that trait inside of him. Maybe he, one day he'll stand back and say, "You know what? I see that there was a family problem, and I don't really think that maybe my mom was such a bad person." And he might have a relationship with that person, and he might choose to have a relationship with you. Okay, but in the meantime, I suggest that you just go on with your life and try to develop, um, you know, um, relationships. You know, I know it's very hard. If I don't know if you're a targeted individual or you're just somebody who scapegoated from your family. Um, but if, if they're talking about, you did mention that there were um, slander campaigns and stuff like that that go that, that have been 
set against you, um, it might be very difficult for you to have, you know, fulfilling relationships, fulfilling friendships. Um, even if you want to find a romantic relationship, that would be difficult for you too, being in a situation like that. So any sort of relationship you have, you know, it could very well end up being toxic. So if you can, you know, maybe get on Facebook or, or join some sort of a targeted individual group or whatever, do the best you can to rebuild your life. I know it's hard, you know, especially when you lack a, a solid support system, but do the best you can to rebuild your life and then just wait it out, but always have hope that there's, you know, as a mother, I'm sure you always have hope that there's going to be another brighter day that comes along in your life so where you can develop a relationship with, with your son. Um, that your, your situation seems a lot like mine in some ways. I know that um, I had a child out of wedlock many years ago. And um, I know that um, I had all full intentions of raising my son. My son was, I raised my son. And um, I know that, um, you know, when I realized that I was pregnant, my family wasn't happy about it, of course, right? But I do know that, looking back, I do know that I was a scapegoated kid. And that doesn't necessarily mean, well, that, that justifies my reasons for having one. But when you look at certain situations, okay, oftentimes when we make these big major life mistakes, it's because it's a reaction to something that we experienced. So for someone like me, I grew up, somewhat religious on my own accord okay I also wanted to have good morals I wanted to be a decent person blah 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 and then when you are dealing with bullying and you feel like you're constantly being abandoned you're opening yourself wide up you're opening yourself up to meeting the wrong friends if you do have a boyfriend even if he's not your standards, you're going to lower your standards because you don't want to be alone. Also, there was a lot of social pressure. I was like, I don't know, 19 or getting close to 20. People were asking me, why don't I have a boyfriend? So I started getting like, you know, there was a lot of bullshit going on when I was younger. So I made some bad choices. Okay. And I'm not saying that um, that's their fault. But I will say when you are a scapegoated kid, okay, I'm going to tell you right now, your future is not going to be bright. You're going to deal with all kinds of stuff. So the very fact that I'm not a heroin addict, I would say is a fucking miracle. Okay. So I do understand. Okay. We all make mistakes. And I think you probably made a mistake. Uh, whether either, whether you got in, involved in a marriage and your marriage ended badly or you had a child out of wedlock or whatever. You, everybody has life experiences and they make mistakes. Okay. And, um, you know, I, it seems like you wanted custody of your child. I, I had custody of my child, okay? Um, I had custody of my child, but I'm pretty sure, okay? I know that my, I, I allowed my son to visit my, my relatives quite often, you know, because I felt like he needed to have a family base. I didn't have the opportunity to grow up with aunts and extended family and uncles and all that stuff. So I wanted that for my son and I was more than happy to allow him to associate with these people. It's not something that I talk about with my son as an adult because I understand that this is a big family issue so I keep my mouth shut most of the time, okay? But realistically, because we know that when you're dealing with these sort of tug-of-war power plays, you know, I know, okay, that, that it's very likely that my son was told negative things about me. Okay. And, you know, um, and it's unfortunate because you, one thing to me, you, you don't ever try to destroy is a relationship between a, a kid and their mom. You don't do that. Okay. It doesn't matter what the appearance looks like, but I will say, um, this is life. That's the way it is, you know, and hopefully my son will understand that, you know, there are sick family dynamics. They are such thing. There is such a thing called bullying. There is such a thing called scapegoating. There is such a thing called um, abuse, okay? There is such a thing called abuse, and your son will do it too, hopefully one day. You know, um, <clears throat> we all make mistakes in life, and um, I know I have, and I'm, I take full responsibility for it. But I will say, you know, getting off the subject of your issue about um, disowning um, your family, um, which sometimes you have to, and I do suggest you go no contact. That's the best thing. Any if, And I also suggest um, that you read information on narcissistic abuse, family scapegoating, um, being the black sheep of the family. Um, if you are a targeted individual, find out as much as you possibly can about it because it starts to clarify things, okay? Because you're probably carrying a heavy load um, emotionally 
um, because of this issue, but you don't really have to, okay? We tend to blame ourselves. I know many years ago, I, I thought something was literally wrong with me. I wasn't beating myself up with it. I just kept thinking, am I so, you know, is something, why does these things keep happening to me? But then I realized there are such things as dysfunctional families, okay? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm sure you didn't do anything wrong, but you just, just take my advice. Just read as much information as you possibly can about that subject, those subjects, okay? And try to build your life up again, you know? Um, but, you know, um, it's unfortunate that people try to turn other people and families against each other. And, um, but it's, that's the way it is, you know? And the, every day I realize that we live in a very dysfunctional world. You know, there's a lot of cutthroat behavior, um, what things appear to be aren't necessarily what they are, um, you know, and people will go so far to use religion or something to, to, you know, um, gain power and control. There, there's all kinds of corrupt sorts of behavior out there. And you just have to try not to allow that to influence you, um, you know. So anyway, I hope I answered your question. I, I hope that, um, you know, you get to have, have a relationship with your son. And most importantly, I hope that you, um, you know, find some sort of closure in all of this. You know, um, don't blame yourself. I know, I mean, keep hope, though, that you will have a relationship with your son one day and that he'll be able to understand your side of the story. Don't, like I said, and don't try to um, ever force sides like, well, you need to make a decision. You're either on my side or your son. It's not going to work like that, okay? And I know it would be great if, if you knew that your son was 100% behind you as he gets older. But that's, that's not the issue. The issue is, is that you're not a bad person. That's all he needs to know. You're not a bad person, okay? And um, that you might be a different person. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Your family might be into sports. You might be into playing the piano. And that right there, because you're different, that makes you rebellious, and that's an egotistical issue. It's a narcissistic issue. Anytime somebody thinks that you're supposed to mimic them, be like little models of them, and then when you don't and they use forceful issues or whatever to try to control you, that is a narcissistic issue, okay? Um, you're not a bad person, and I hope that you find some sort of healing. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video. I will be back with another video some other time later, and for all TIs, stay safe.